You hear that? I think it's kind of retro time. This is the Evercade Exp, EXP, Experience, whatever. Basically what it is, is it's a emulation handheld that takes cartridges. The box is very plain. There's, there's nothing else to it. There's a little bit of uh, RGB here, but I don't know if that indicates anything. Oh, okay. So it's a box within a box kind of thing. It comes with the Toa Plan arcade kit. This is a cartridge of Toa Plan arcade games. It's one of the things that the Evercade X or Evercade lineup is actually really good for is a lot of these games, basically like arcade games don't really get re-releases very often, but they do on the Evercade. Uh, you get a little keychain here. Let me get it out of the, it's the shape of a, of a cartridge. What's on the other side? <laughs> insert cartridge. Yeah, I don't know if you want to insert this one, but maybe it fits. If it does, that'd be cool. You get a carrying case. So you got a little spot for the, the handheld itself and for some games. Yeah, they got little pockets in here, sub pockets. Uh, you get a little cleaning cloth, Evercade X. So you got Evercade X, the console itself, Tate. What that basically means is vertical. And that's one of the party tricks of the Evercade Exp is that you can actually hold it this way and play vertical shooters. And I'm looking forward to trying that out. Wow, but unlike the outer box, this box is just crammed with all kinds of stuff. Yeah, some Street Fighter on this side. You got some uh, Mega Man and uh, 1942 on the other side. I guess this is a Capcom bundle. Yeah, games from Capcom and IREM. Okay, so I guess this might be like a collector's edition pack or something. I'm not entirely sure. This is what you would get normally if you buy it. Yeah, a fair number of decent Capcom games in here. We've got Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting, uh, all the Mega Man, wait, Mega Man and Mega Man 2 and Mega Man X. Interesting selection. Let's get this guy out of the box and see what it looks like, ah, oh, yeah. Now, the original Evercade really looked plasticky, and this does too, but it looks a lot more premium. It reminds me of how the DS Lite looked and felt when they first announced it, whereas the original Evercade had the red accents and it all kind of looked kind of meh. D-pad, I mean, it's okay. It's serviceable, it doesn't really feel all that definitive, like it kind of moves pretty freely. Maybe that'll be good for fighting games. The buttons though, the face buttons? Eh, actually, they're... Okay, there's more snap to the Y button up here than there is to the A button down here. This feels a little bit more mushy, whereas this is a little bit snappier. It's not a huge difference, but you know, you'll notice it. Uh, oh, and these, these are also a little bit mushy, but uh, it's probably fine. It is a little awkward to hold like this though. Just saying, there, there could used to be like a little, uh, little indent or something on the back here, but it's just flat. So holding it like this, you're just like, I mean, it's like holding your phone by this little part of it down here. It's not an amazing experience, but hey, you can do it. Uh, on the bottom here, we've got a USB type C and a headphone output jack. Don't know what this button is for. This is obviously the volume controls and I don't know what this is either. Some kind of light. Oh, it's it's marked with a T. So presumably this is the mode to switch over to talk to so like vertical. So like if your game is like this and you know, you wanna do full screen, you'd hit the T and then you do that. And of course you've got the great big honking cartridge slot on the back there. And I think the reason it's that big, I mean, it doesn't have to be, they actually have full compatibility, at least as far as I can tell from the marketing materials with the original Evercade cartridges, which I think they now have like 30 or more, all of which have, well, most of which have more than five games on them. Uh, a lot of them actually have like more than eight. Also you have a little uh, mini HDMI port up there if you wanna plug it in your TV. Not sure if that's something that you'd really wanna do, but it's there. Shoulders are, eh, they're fine. It probably wouldn't be too bad. I mean, these are kind of older games, so you're not going to be using these triggers on the left and right so often, but uh, you know, it's something to, to take note of. Uh, yeah, here we go. So, right, this is the IRM arcade cartridge. Presumably, the Capcom games are just built into this thing. So I was correct, that T is the Tate mode button. And that light, when it's red, it's charging. When it's blinking green, it's booting up. And when it's blinking red, it's time to charge. I appreciate this. This is actually nicely laid out. So this is a really nice touch. I like this. Maybe it's just the nostalgia in me liking old instruction manuals you can flip through on the toilet. I don't know. Let's pop a game out and see what that looks like. Okay. You also get an instruction manual with this. Much the same. It's a different form factor. So why cartridges? I mean, aside from the fact that it's like, honestly, Pretty satisfying to just do that. Oh, uh-oh. Okay, it's a little uh, a little tight on the 
current gen console, I'll say that. That was a little harder than I would have expected. It's, it's a pretty tight fit to get it into the slot and I'm not sure if that's by design or if it's just because this is brand new and it needs some time to wear in. There's more to it than just getting the games. Plus all of these are fully licensed. So it's not a piracy console or anything like that. Speaking of which, that's not even like half of them. Like they've got 30 of these now. Like we've got Intellivision, we've got Atari. These are new games, I think. These are Evercade exclusives. How about that? The Atari Lynx collection, Jaleco, and of course we've got, I say of course, I don't think I've ever heard of Kelco. How about we turn it on and see how it plays? But first, I'll talk to you about our sponsor. Thanks to Secret Lab for sponsoring today's video. Secret Lab chairs are engineered to keep you incredibly comfortable for long hours at work and play. Their Titan Evo 2022 chair keeps you feeling comfortable for longer. It has four-way lumbar support, an ultra comfortable line of different seat materials and more. All their chairs come with up to a five-year extended warranty and a 40-day return policy. All their chairs come with options for up to a five-year extended warranty and they have a 49-day return policy. Head to the link in the description below and check out Secret Lab today. Speakers don't sound amazing. So the first thing we get is our cartridge, which is the IRM Arcade Collection. Then we can go over to our built-in games. There's hidden games? We can unlock games. I would prefer that they were already unlocked. Presumably this is maybe the downloadable section? I don't know. It says coming soon. And what I presume are the settings. Okay, so display. Okay, cool. We have aspect ratios. So we have the original ratio. We have pixel perfect, which will be an integer scale. It'll give you black borders most of the time, but that way you, you won't have any weird scaling artifacts like blur or misshapen pixels. Uh, and full screen is if you are a monster and you like to play your four by three games in 16 by nine. I'm not sure why this, oh right, because of Tate mode. Okay. Dynamic rate control. I guess it has adaptive sync. I'm not sure why you'd have that off. Oh wait, maybe, maybe that's not what that is. Maybe what that is, is speeding up or slowing down the game to sync to the refresh rate of the display. Maybe that's why it's off by default. I don't think that this has any settings information in that little, uh, little quick start guide. So I'd have to check the online manual. And it's secret. <laughs> okay. It's got a code entry screen, I guess for unlocking games maybe. Again, it's cute, but I'm pretty sure that I would prefer to just have these features unlocked. See how Megman 2 looks. And they've got all the play controls and stuff here too. That doesn't sound right to me. No, it's not because of the volume. It's like, bit crushed, which is strange because it's 8-bit. But yeah, that, that's not clipping, that's, that's just gritty. I'm not sure why that is, but I guess it doesn't really matter if, uh, if the gameplay is okay. Oh man, that sounds crunchy. No, that's, that's unpleasant, I'm sorry. I don't know how the headphone output sounds or how the HDMI output sounds, but these speakers don't sound very good with this. That's the menu key. Well, while we're here, uh, quick save, we can, I think maybe customize the controls. No, we just have the controls. Okay. It'd be nice if we had control customization as well. I can see myself hitting the menu button a lot instead of hitting start. These buttons are lower than the menu button. I'm gonna turn this down. Uh, did I not hit A? Does A not jump? No, it doesn't. Oh, oh, okay. It's B. Oh, I don't like this. I, li I, I like this layout, like pressing uh, X for shoot and uh, A to jump. I don't think I can do that. No, I can't change the controls. Oh, that's... I don't like this. Hmm. Yeah, a couple of frames of lag. Well, I mean, it feels pretty responsive, but I don't... I'm not happy with the NES emulation. Uh, let's try a vertical game. Okay, so I can Tate mode that. I guess select for credits? Yeah. Let's just dump coins in there. Uh, this also sounds a little crunchy. Tate mode works really well though. It is a little, like I have to brace my hand in a different way. What I'm doing is I'm holding my hand like that so that I'm actually like supporting 
the the higher part of the console and then i'm like kind of tweaking my my thumbs down it's like kind of it's not super comfortable but it works So when you're in Tate mode, even these uh, on-screen controls up here use these these lower buttons. Ah, I, I keep thinking the confirm is on the right because that's kind of how it is in, uh, well, on the NES and also in like most Japanese controllers. What's a more modern title here? I mean, Breath of Fire, like Super Nintendo. Yeah, let's run Mega Man X and see how that works. Uh, I'm, I'm not looking forward to how this sounds based on what I've heard so far. That's actually not bad. The stereo is pretty good too. I mean, yeah, the sound doesn't sound bad. The uh, graphics, I mean, that doesn't look terrible to me, um, but it's it's kind of small, so it's difficult to see if there are any major errors. It looks like the stretch might be making some inconsistent pixels here on these status bars. Yeah, it's not something I can see at this, like, this angle to show the camera, but if I were to look at it straight on, I think I would notice. Yeah, you can kind of tell in uh, X's health bar up here. I'm not sure if that looks off or not. I'm, it's a small screen. Um, otherwise, it seems to play pretty okay for the Super Nintendo games. It seems like it's just the NES games that it kind of sucks for. Like the emulator is just bad. Like the, the audio sounds like it's being mixed at like 11 kilohertz or something, which is not enough. 1.5 gigahertz, presumably it's just an arm of some kind with four gigabytes of system memory. You could get by with like maybe a gig or 512 megs, depending on the complexity of the operating system. So presumably it's because of all the the artwork and stuff that they had to preload here. I think that CPU is definitely fast enough to do accurate NES and, and Super NES emulation. So I'm not sure why it's like that. Maybe it can be fixed in a firmware update. Obviously this is software based, so it's not like it's going to be fixed in that way. I guess that's one of the advantages to having this platform is that you know, when you buy these games, a future revision of the console could actually make them play better or give you more features to make the gameplay experience better. It's tough to, to really fully analyze the gameplay experience because I don't know if it's going to be the same throughout the lifespan of this console. But those NES games, they just sound bad. At 149 for the console and about 20 or $25 for each of those. It's not a bad value, it's just, I feel like there are better ways to play these games. It's tough, I want to like this, but the quality of the emulation, at least on the NES side, was just unbearable. I don't know, maybe that's just a Capcom thing. Maybe each of these games has its own encapsulated emulator and it's, this is just running it. Uh, I don't know what the architecture of the system looks like. If you're gonna carry this around with you, I mean, assuming you have the official carrying case, you got, this, and you've got room for two games in here. I guess make sure that you choose the games you want to play. Like it's it's a little inconvenient to carry around, you know, your, your library, right? This would be better, I think, for the home console version of the Evercade, like the Versus. As nice as the cartridges are, a downloadable experience would probably be a lot nicer. And I don't see a spot for an SD card or anything like that, so I don't know how much storage is even on here. They need to improve the emulation. The console itself feels pretty solid. I mean, it is a little chunky, but that's okay because it makes it easier to hold unless you're holding it like this, in which case, you know. <laughs> but at least you have the option, right? So yeah, it seems like the software is letting it down mostly and the, the software ecosystem as well. It's its biggest strength and its biggest weakness, I think. Why is it getting warm? I mean, it, it, it doesn't seem like it is really doing much. Like right now, it doesn't seem like it's doing much, but it's still warm. It feels like they've got a lot of work to do. They've got a lot of work to do on the software ecosystem and they've got a lot of work to do on, you know, just, just making sure that the experience is okay. Now they say you can get four to five hours of battery life on this. That's enough, I guess. I mean, it's not going to be similar to the old school Game Boy or anything like that. I mean, it's, it's comparable to a Switch. Assuming that's correct, I mean, I mean, we've been playing this whole time and it hasn't ticked down at all. It was already at uh, three bars on the battery. As it is right now, I would recommend it only if you really want these cartridges. And that's really the bottom line. There are better handhelds to have. And if you have a game collection already, you can dump your own games. And there's no piracy required for following Short Circuit. We have plenty of other things like this and not like this. There's retro time, there's not retro time. What time is it now? You decide.